this. Okay. Okay, so link servers are very, very important in SQL, especially for developers. Uh, when they are writing their, 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 their codes, um, if a developer writes a code in, uh, let's say, in a dev environment, and that code is supposed to read some data in the production environment, right? Uh, so long as that is doing all read only, you can create a link server. And even when the developer does not have access to that production server, so long as there's a link server, he or she can pull data from production directly, right? So you can do that. So sometimes you need to do that. And that's what I've been asked to do. Or sometimes you might want, you might be running a SQL server and needs to pull data from an Oracle server. The only way you can do that is set up a link server that will be able to remotely connect to the Oracle server and pull data from it. So I want you guys to really do this and take this as a homework. Make sure you configure it on your own. I'm not going to wait for everybody to do it, but watch the video, make sure you configure link server to be able to talk about it and interview. So that's the reason why you do link server. If you are doing it with an Oracle database or you're trying to connect an Oracle server, you will need to install Oracle client on that uh, SQL server to be able to link it with an Oracle. But if you're just linking SQL servers, it's easy. You can just do that. And I'm going to walk, the steps are very simple. I'm just going to walk you guys through the way to do it, All right? So uh, we're going to start up uh, here. I have a question. So you said uh, it's, it's used only for uh, reading data that's doing a select only, no updating? No, you can also do updates depending on what account, what permission level you use to connect to that link server. Okay. And also used to move data from. One of the other. Yeah. He's also used to move data. Yes. So it depends on what permission level the account has that you're setting up that link server. Then you can do more. All right. Okay. Now, let's <coughs> my 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 uh, my um, default instance, and this is a name instance that I call STG here. Uh, if I check here, for example, I have uh, the SA okay. password. Because I have, I have a no, I did my hand It's a coin to my body. So uh, uh, Barbara, please meet. Can you see anywhere? Right. So you have the, the gone, doctor. <laughs> you have these different accounts. So if I want to set up a link server, let's say I am here in product, and let's say this is death, and I want to link up with a production server here on the SQL Server objects, server objects, you have link servers right now i don't have any link server so if i want need to set a link server right click new link server you guys talk about this all the time when you're doing migration make sure you script out all the link server then script out login script a job that's the link server so to do that right click go to link server and uh i have vms running that's why my computer is really bit slow so it's a sql server so if it's an Oracle, you're going to select other data sources. First, you have to install Oracle data client. It will pop up here and you'll select that Oracle data client. But for now, I'm just linking up another SQL server. And the SQL server is, this is it. The SQL server name is ktech uh, backslash stg. That's it. And under security, this is the account that will make connections with the other account. So right now I'm trying to link this one to this. So let me go with the first account. There's several different ways of authentication. Well, let me start with this one here. Be made using this security context. When you select this option here, what you are saying is that you want SQL Server to uh, pick up a, an account that is already found in this. You're using an account that is already in this instance that you're trying to link up. So I know SA is an account that is there, and I know the password is password one. So you're using an account that already exists in the remote server, and that's it. Click connect. You're done. So right now here, if I expand this date, this server here, for example, these are all the databases that I have on this S. This is my staging server. These are all the databases here. I don't have them. Right, but because I have linked it up, I can literally view all the databases that are here. You can see all the mm. databases that are down here. 
have been linked to this server and I can view them here. And because I, I connected using the SA account, I can literally do every single thing because the account has elevated privileges on this server. That's one way to do this. Now, let's delete. Doc, uh, I wanted to add something to the account you just used. That la the last option you used, that the last option that you choose, that can only go with a SQL, uh, a SQL authentication account. Yes. It cannot go with a Windows account. Yes, it can only go with SQL, a SQL authenticator. Okay, so now let me delete this account and do it again. Delete this one. So, okay, before I delete it, now, if this was a migration and you're migrating data from this server to a different server, what you need to do, you also need to script out this link server when you're done with migration. What am I doing? Just right click on it and say script link server as new create. But remember, the password again will be a random password will be generated for you. You can see here, the password here, uh, the password, oh, it's actually, let me see. For security reason, the link server remote login password is changed with this. It's just changed with that, right? So that's the password, but, but, but it, it's not the right password. It's just because they don't want to show you the password. So now I can literally copy this script and run it on a new server, but just make sure that when you do that, you have to make sure that you, you change this password because after that, the password will not work. For example, let me just Keep this one here, for example, and delete this and rerun this for you to see what I'm talking about. But when you create a link server, you can always test, if you right click on it to see whether it works, you can test connection. If you click test connection, it tells you test connection for the link server succeeded. So which means, of course, you are really connected to it. Now let me drop this and assume that I scripted this somewhere else and I'm bringing it here. Now if I run this one here, uh, am I running on the same? Yes. So I'm running it here. If I run this script, it creates the link server successfully. Quite all right. Now, this is it. But if I test the connection, it doesn't work. Login fail for user SA. So when you script this, you have to know the password because you need to change the password. Right? And this is not an other rev login where you can script. I don't know how to do that but you have to literally come change, change the password. But here, since I already know the password, what I could do is I can right click on the, and go to properties of this link server and then go down to security and literally just change the password to password one, click okay. And now if I test the connection again now, it succeeds, right? This is how you script our link server when you're doing a migration. You script out the link server and run it there, but just um, mind be, be aware that when you script out the SA password, the account password will not be the same. All right, now let's do it one more time. Let's go ahead now and drop this link server one more time and do it again. Now, new link server. Now, first I just talked about using the the last option which is let me okay take backslash stg uh, and it's a sql server now you have these different options uh be made without using a security context so this is an option here you have to be made without using security up and be made using the login uh current security context so these two here this one you can, if you need to connect using this option, you can create a login here, but what you have to do is that you have the option to impersonate. You can impersonate, uh, use a current login that is found here because you know the login and impersonate. It will go to this server and impersonate that login and you see connect. That's when you can use that. Uh, the other option here, what you need to do is you literally have to provide the remote user and the remote password. You need, so you need to know a user that exists on the remote server and its password to be able to connect. Now let's try with this one here. Now I click new. I can decide here. Let's say I want to use a Windows authentication. Uh, I can go ahead and select, uh, let me go with 
login so yeah, log security login i uh, have an account here which is this one all right let me use that account so it's k take backslash dennis dennis yeah dennis all right okay so and i'm, in, I'm going to impersonate it and click okay see of course now you connect to the link server because you're impersonating an account that already exists on this server this account exists and it's a windows authentication it exists and it's going to come here impersonate and pull all the data from this you're able to link it here so this time around if i script out this link server now that i've impersonated using a windows windows authentication i'm not giving you a chance to do it because i know you watch the video you're going to repeat what i've just done today you see here that the uh, password is null why because it's a windows server and it takes its password from the active directory so you don't need a password right so uh, so that's that's how you do that okay so now let's drop it again let's drop this link server and now this time around let's configure the link server one more time and we're going to use the other option question doc yes please the login that you used to create that link server on that uh, first uh, instance or that server does yes. it exist on the other instance uh if i use this option I mean the login name that you use to connect on that link server does it does it exist on both uh, instances? No. If you if you use the word impersonate, this login that you are putting here must not exist on the secondary server on the on the remote server. Okay. It will impersonate it and pull it because it's a Windows authentication. But if it's a SQL Server authentication, you what what you need to do is let's say. I want to use a SQL Server authentication. I will need to make sure that this, the login actually exists here. All right? Let's say, for example, this login. I will make sure that it exists. So there are two options. If you're either if you're using this option, be made using a security context. You use a Windows authentication. You can impersonate. If you decide to use a SQL Server authentication, let's say Linda, uh, Linda as a user, you have to provide the remote. Oh, sorry. You have to do it here, uh, Linda, and then the password. Now, this must exist here. And the, and the, I don't know which one has to be on both server. I don't know this one. I'm, I'm, between these two, one of these two here must have the login present on both servers. Uh, let me try this and see if it works. No, it doesn't work. Okay, so drop it again. Okay, now let's try this. Uh, SQL Server, uh, KTEC, backslash STG. And I have to make sure login. I can decide use this and I say this is called Linda. Do I have Linda on both servers? Uh, Linda is here and she's also here. Okay. So Linda and password one. Okay, you see? So that option, if you use the second option, you must make sure the login exists on both servers and you'll be able to do the same thing right so, so i have a question on this impersonating the the login where you impersonate yeah. the login what happens other users can still query from that link server or it's only to the one that you impersonate no it's a user is a user that you that you impersonate so it means you're granting access to that link server just to linda which you impersonated yes if you need more users you can add it you can do okay i have here so the so another another question is if you don't impersonate and take the last the last option where you have to provide like the one you provided the sa right any mm -hmm. other user in that 
server can query from that link server or you need to always uh, grant the users access to that link server? You, if you select this option here, it's only that user that gets a permission. Hold on, that's the SA, right? Yeah, this one. So most of the time, if you need, to, you use this one when you want to use, when you want to use the SA account. Okay. So the thing, the uh, the reason why I'm asking is is because mm -hmm. uh, I have link server in my environment where they choose that last option and they use by the service account of that server to create a link server. Yes. And I see, I think two or three names impersonated. Yeah. So once you use this, this connection, it makes the connection. So let me do SA, for example, and then <coughs> password one. Now, this gets a mixed connection to that server. Now, if you have multiple users in the environment that needs to access this, for example, let's say I have these Dennis, I can uh, impersonate them. Uh, KTEC backslash now uh, Dennis, and I will impersonate this. I can add multiple users. I do have KTEC also backslash uh, student. They're all Windows account, and I also have this SV account. Okay, KTEC backslash um, SV account. That means uh, that means this is where you like grant user access to query the link server. Then yes. So now okay. you have granted them. Now let's let's say for example, okay, there's um, I don't have an option to log onto this server using any of these users. But um, now let me try now logging now using Linda as uh, because she has to, she has to just we grant the permission for her. So we we'll log into that account, this server. This time around, we're logging onto this one. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to use SQL Server Authentication and Linda, for example, and I use password one, connect. Oh, come on. Uh, password one. Did I recreate that Linda? Oh, I recreated her with that different, that long password. Okay, let me just go and change her password here. Let me change the password. She was recreated with a different password. So let me just change the password to password one. Password one. Okay. All right. Now let's log in now using that account. By the way, where's Linda anyway? This is what I told I tell you guys all the time, right? Okay, now she logs in, and then if she checks links servers, link server, see, she's able to see that because she's if you if you log in now with an account that does not have this, you'll not be able to see this. You can see catalogs, and you're able to see. Oh, this one only sees the default. Why? Because Linda does not have a log permission on this account. All right, you can see that. She does not have. If I make Linda now a sys admin, let's see if, if that changes. Doc, what is this um, link server used for? To query, look, you are in a different server and you're able to see data found in a different server because they have been linked. Developers will love this because they need to be able to, they don't want to, whenever they change their script and go to a different uh, server, they don't want to go ahead and start changing the script. They just say, okay, you know what, please just link this server. I was doing this development on a different server. Now I am in a different server. I want to see, be able to pull data from where I was. Link these two server for me. Okay. That's what this yeah, you, I think you, you can also create a link server and grant uh, just ob particular objects, uh, grant uh, users just particular objects into that link server. So you can create a link server and then uh, link it to a particular server and into a database grant just a particular table view t view access or read mm -hmm. access to a particular table mm -hmm. in a database yeah yeah all right guys i'm going to stop here it's, all, it's already 11 o'clock but, but instead of doing that why don't you just just give just create a, a user like uh, 